My name's John Menino. I'm a luthier from Reedsville, Pennsylvania, owner of Lumber City Guitars. I love building guitars. I absolutely uh, just love it. And just getting recognized, getting the respect from some of the fellow builders and players that when I give them one of my guitars and they play it, they say, okay, that's okay, I like that. When I was a, a kid in my 20s, I had a friend that his father used to make violins. And I remember going down to his house and he would take me down into his basement and show me what he was doing, show me the violins he was making. And it, it just fascinated me. And I think that planted the seed in my head that sprouted later on in my life. When I work construction full time for probably 15 of the years, I'd get home at night and I'd be tired. So I, I would go down and, and I'd say, well, where was I? You know, where was I? And it's hard to get a flow going and stay with something. And now that I have the time to really put into it, I can keep the flow going. Now I have the luxury of being able to, to do it full time. I start out not so much a perceived idea, but as I work on it, the wood will talk to me and the guitar is being built will talk to me. And it's something that comes from within. And then it takes shape from that. I'm listening for a specific vibration. I'm looking to the feel of it. You don't want your back and your top to be vibrating on the same pitch. They're gonna fight each other. And there's different things, you know, you experiment with different shapes and different thicknesses. Then you look for your ideal spot. Favorite woods are probably uh, European spruce and uh, East Indian rosewood, I would say. I use different mahoganies, uh, maples. I live in Pennsylvania, so I have some maples. I get off a Dutchman up the end of a valley that is a beautiful wood. Uh, but I, I use a lot of different woods. And rosewood is getting really scarce now and expensive, certain rosewoods. So uh, there's a big thing right now in people using alternative woods. But uh, I'd say rosewood's my favorite, though. I think I started mostly being influenced by Martin guitars and, and their bracing patterns. It takes a long time to learn to be able to graduate your thickness of your guitars, your, your different plates, and you have to build a lot. The more you build, the more you learn. And I'm 100% self-taught. I didn't have the chance to go to school, but I think I really must have wanted to do this because I stuck with it. I put my hours in. I've, I've really dedicated myself to this. And uh, now, 18 years later, starting to uh, enjoy the fruits of my labor. I mostly stay to traditional shapes and traditional sizes. I use a wide, thick binding that sets my guitars apart, and I think it also helps to stiffen the sides. Plus, it gives you a nice visual. I do a lot of pinstriping and the headstocks. I, I don't do a whole lot of plain stuff. Not that it's elaborate, but uh, there's a lot of detail. I try to put detail into my guitars. I use a nitrocellulose lacquer finish, and uh, I'm very, very particular about my finishing. I spend a lot of time putting several coats on, sanding them back, leveling them out, and then getting back on. You, know, you try not to get it too thick, but at the same time, you want a nice finish that you can get some depth in your gloss and that's what I go for. A lot of times on my necks I'll use a oil finish and sometimes a, a lacquer. Uh, lately I've been using a satin lacquer, but mostly I've been using a gun finish oil and that makes a nice finish on, on a neck. A lot of people will take their, their finishing and sub that part out 
And to me, that's the exciting part because that's when you start to see, oh, what I, what do I got here? You know, and uh, I just love wood. I love grains. I just uh, love to see what the finish does to the wood. So that's the things that uh, I think some luthiers that don't do that are missing a lot. But a lot of people have been doing it for a lot of years and it is a volatile vapor. So you have to wear a mask and be careful, but uh, finishing is one of my favorite parts, actually. I had a friend that, uh, he's an art teacher, and he taught school in, uh, at this junior college, and they were taking all the bleachers out of the auditorium. It had been in the uh, auditorium for 50, 60 years, and it was all real old growth Douglas fir. And the guitar, uh, I call it the bleacher guitar, it came out wonderfully. It's a very pleasing look. It has a reddish almost uh, hue to the wood, and it's very unique. So that's the most unusual wood that I've used, using the Douglas fir on the top. Being a player does help. Uh, it, you get to understand setup, how the frets feel, how your intonation is a great, great big part of everything. And I think if not being a player, you would not scope in and zoom in on those kind of little nuances and how high is your action? Are you buzzing over the nut? Why is it doing it? You know, there's so many different things, but yes, being a player definitely does help and being a builder. They go hand in hand. Building guitars is the biggest part of my life. I work seven days a week now. I used to work five days a week. It's nice to get to a point where you can't wait to get up in the morning to start working again. And I find that a lot. And I'll go to sleep thinking about what I'm gonna do the next day. And just to be able to get up and like, go downstairs and say, oh, I'm excited about this. I can work a 12-hour day and it doesn't bother me. <laughs> Once you get going, you get started, then you get excited and it keeps building and building. So you, you don't want to quit. You, know, so you just keep sauntering through and think about what am I going to build next? What kind of guitar am I going to build? What shape? What, uh, what woods am I going to use? It's always a challenge and it's very, very fulfilling for me. I feel very good about what I'm doing. Putting my guitar in the hands of a, a skilled player and just be able to listen, that's my joy.